In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install a graphical Git client called Atlassian SourceTree. SourceTree is a very handy tool for new users of Git, as the graphical client provides a lot of shortcuts and how to use Git and what to do next. Experienced users of Git will also find SourceTree useful to provide visual representations of histories, branches, and other features of a Git repository that aren't always so self-evident when using command line clients. For this example, I'm going to install SourceTree on a copy of OS X. Now, OS X and Windows will be slightly different, but the experience in using SourceTree in the graphical client will be nearly identical. Now that I'm using Safari for OS X, I can open my web browser to the URL sourcetreeapp.com. Atlassian is nice enough to provide a nice big blue button that says download SourceTree for free for OS X, versions 10.6 and up. And if I click on this, it'll start the download automatically. Atlassian is a company that provides a couple of different commercial products and Git repositories that can be used either hosted in a cloud such as Bitbucket or Stash that is a Git repository that can be hosted inside a firewall for more managed software development teams. Once SourceTree is finished downloading, we can go to the download section of either Safari or Chrome, depending on what browser we're using, and we can see that we've downloaded an OS X disk image. If we double click on that disk image, it'll open a new window with the installer. Installing SourceTree on OS X is simple as taking the SourceTree icon and dragging it onto the application shortcut folder. And if you hold the icon over the applications folder, you see the finder pop open into that new applications window. And if we double click on the SourceTree icon, OS X will pop open a gatekeeper warning, which is asking you if you trust Atlassian to install software on your computer. OS X provides gatekeeper as a security mechanism so that you have the ability to review what type of software is being installed on your system. In this case, we're going to trust the SourceTree app installer and open SourceTree on our system. Once you do that, you get a nice welcome message welcoming you to SourceTree and some very simple instructions on how to get started using it. In our case, we're going to need to set up SourceTree to connect with our GitHub repositories. The way we do this is through the SourceTree setup wizard. And if we go to the SourceTree menu and click Setup Wizard, it'll pop open some information that it may know about you already based on some information we've used in other Git clients on the system. So it'll know a name that I'm going to use in commits, and it's also going to know my email address. Now this is due to using command line clients as well. These are global Git settings. And I'll also need to agree to some terms and conditions. In this case, I'll agree to them and simply click Next. And SourceTree is also going to ask if I want to connect to a couple of different online services. The first two are Atlassian's own Git services, but in our examples, we're using the GitHub web repository. So we'll just log in to GitHub using our username and password. In this case, my username is Chad Infinite Skills. And you'll want to enter the username and password you'll have signed up for on GitHub.com. And once a username and password is entered, submit next. It'll ask you for another authentication step. In this case, it's going to save that authentication in a keychain that's kept locally, so you shouldn't have to re enter passwords every time you interact with GitHub through SourceTree. Now, SourceTree will also ask if you'd like to find some local repositories on your system. If you have a source folder that you check a lot of things out into, it might not be a bad idea. In this case, we're just going to skip this step and finish the setup of SourceTree. Now with that, we should have completed the setup of SourceTree. We can verify this by clicking on a clone button up in the upper left-hand corner. If we click Add Repository, SourceTree will pop down a dialog asking us which repository we'd like to clone. A quick way to verify that you've set up your remote accounts correctly is if you click on the little globe button in this dialog, a set of hosted repositories for your accounts will come up. And in this case, we have one repository that's owned by the Infinite Skills Organization on GitHub that is our example project that we're using for later projects. 
With this, we've set up source tree correctly, so we can continue to use source tree to check out and manipulate Git repositories.